Today on Mixed Reef, we're going to be putting together our Makers Pro 4-Bank Array from LED Supply. LED Supply has done a very nice job in packaging and making sure that everything was bubble wrapped for shipping to my house. Uh, I will be taking you through the step-by-step -step process on how to assemble uh, each array uh, as we go along. LED Supply uh, provides you with uh, nuts and screws and a little plastic washer in order to hold your LEDs in place on the heat sink. Um, I found it most easy to uh, assemble these things by using a pair of uh, pliers and uh, you get your little plastic washer because it doesn't feed on quite easily enough. Uh, you kind of place it on there like so and then uh, what I do is I kind of just press it down between the two uh, needle nose wires and it slides pretty much to the base not quite on this one pretty much the base so you end up having it sort of look like that so then you can put the nut on it and uh, it will slide right into the hole on the heat sink uh, these are the uh, Cree XTE uh, Royal Blue LEDs. Um, they come uh, all attached together in a sheet, but they easily snap apart. Just be gentle with them, no tool required. The kit, you'll find uh, a pack of uh, thermal grease. Uh, I gather that I'm doing a four bank LED array, so I've gotten four of these uh, thermal grease tubes that I'm going to be now uh, applying to each one of my LEDs as I place them and screw them down onto my heat sink. So you only need a little bit of uh, thermal grease to attach uh, to your back of your LED. So that's basically about all you sort of need. So a helpful tip I would uh, give is uh, make a uh, paper tape pattern uh, on your heat sink. Um, this will help you avoid having uh, your LEDs uh, meet up plus to plus instead of minus to plus. Um, some of the LEDs on my heat sink I've, I've put on backwards or reversed so the pluses would meet with a minus and then the you know minus would meet with a plus and so on and so forth and it makes for a much neater wiring job on your heat sink and it makes for a better looking uh, array in general. So again just use a, a uh, template or some kind of pattern diagram that you have here that's going to help you make sure that all your poles uh, match up properly uh, plus to minus plus to minus all the way through your series. So you end up having a really nice LED array that looks like this one. So I'm going to proceed with the soldering. Um, I have made a uh, pattern for the flow of the wiring for the LEDs uh, for the blue and white white being green and the blue being blue uh, paper tape onto the heat sink. So it just sort of gives me the flow and make sure that all my uh, poles, uh, the negative and positive, are going to line up properly so we don't have any uh, miswiring. Um, I would recommend having a good pair of wire cutters because you are going to cut a lot of wire. That's good soldering iron. A cup of coffee also helps. And uh, some solder, some uh, the thinnest kind you can find. I guess it's like 28 gauge uh, solder. So, anyways, I'm gonna solder this together, and we'll pick it up from there. Oh, so here is my uh, fully assembled LED array, all soldered, wired, and ready to go on t on my heat sink. Uh, I did use a couple of extra little screws here just to hold down these uh, long extra wires that I have running from one end of the array to the other. So in the dimmer pack, you're gonna find uh, some literature, some notes on uh, wiring and things to check for when you're doing your, your setup. Uh, these are handy. I would uh, have them standing by and take a close look at them so you don't make any mistakes. So we're gonna look at the uh, dimmer control here for the unit. So on here, you're gonna see the 48 volt power supply going in and your channel 1 and channel 2. These are going to be running your LEDs. So anyways, here's the driver. Here's the dimmer. Uh, you can see, maybe you can see the three prongs there. 
Anyways, it's got three holes right here and then they're all twos. So you obviously know which way this driver will sit in here. So repeat the process on the second one. It goes in exactly the same way. This is your, uh, your fan power right here, this little white uh, three prong. So that's, uh, that's to power your fan. This is the side that you're gonna plug in your controller to. If you have a controller, you're using that kind of setup. So I decided that before I assemble the whole unit, I wanted to make sure that this, uh, these drivers and the dimmer control uh, powered up uh, along with my uh, controller that gives me my sunrise, sunset uh, lighting effects. So one really, really important thing that you need to make sure that you do correctly and that you can burn out these uh, dimmers is to make sure that you get the plus and the minus correct on your uh, power supply so that the wires end up going from the negative and the positive end up going to the negative and the positive on your unit on your dimmer unit so anyways here goes the uh, the, the test to power this thing up so there you go you can see that the controller has come on and the little, there's a little LED, a little red LED right here that has come on. Um, <clears throat> so it looks like this unit is working correctly and I will proceed to the assembly onto the heat sink. So I've noticed uh, that before I start my assembly on the heat sink with the dimmer, that the three prong will get pretty uh, unaccessible once I mount it on here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up the fan to that three prong so we can uh, slip that on there and tighten it down and we don't have to worry about trying to hook up the fan afterwards. When you assemble your uh, LED uh, array, make sure that you point the, uh, the fan downwards. So it has a label up here. Put the label on the inside so the fan blows down uh, onto uh, the heat sink keeping those LEDs cool. That would be uh, my recommendation. Uh, this is your power supply. Basically, you have your uh, positive, your negative, and your ground right here. Um, this is your negative and your positive that's going to run to your LEDs. Um, over here, you have a, an adjuster screw for your voltage. Um, and over here is a very important little, little part. It has a, a, a 220 and a 110 switch over. And so you want to make sure that you uh, switch it over to the 110 before you plug this thing in uh, to the wall uh, because it can really damage the drivers. So that's a very important thing to remember right there is that little switch. There's a little switch in there. You just flip it over with a screwdriver or some scissors or whatever you got handy. Uh, in the kit comes um, well, a power cord, two-pronged power cord. Uh, the ends are already clipped and ready to go and we're going to attach that. To notice that the uh, controller's clock was not set and uh, it thought it was night time so I've reset the clock so I'm going to turn these back on again. And these should be a much brighter intensity now which they certainly are. Um, anyways, just thought that that was interesting so when you go to build this thing and you hook it up with the controller and make sure that the clock's set for daytime. A few last things I'd like to cover here before we wrap this thing up is that LED Supply does have an optional uh, hanging kit that you can get for your LED array. Uh, this is your vertical cable, this is your horizontal cable. It attaches to the nuts uh, and bolt and a little washer that sits on your heat sink. It comes in this plastic little uh, baggie right here. And also in the kit it has these uh, little rubber uh, finishing um, pieces right here that also go on to your heat sink. Um, so basically what you want to do is you want to take your vertical cable right here and it threads through this little guy right there and threads through that little guy. It has uh, a tension so it locks when you feed it through and if you want to unlock it you push on this little part right there. That little part right there will, will loosen it off so if you want to move the uh, LED array up or down uh, to closer or further away from your fish tank, it gives you that option. Um, it also has a, um, uh, a little nut inside there, that little black dot, that little nut 
uh, you'll need an Allen key for to tighten that. That tightens, uh, I guess, your horizontal uh, cross section here so it doesn't slide around on you back and forth. Um, and as far as hooking it up into the ceiling, it's really easy. Uh, the cable comes, the vertical cable comes to this um, little nut right here. Uh, it comes to a ball and it comes to a little nut. This piece and this piece and you drill it into your ceiling or wherever you're going to be mounting these things off of. And then you thread this thing in here. And this is your vertical cable that's going to hook up to your horizontal that's going to support your LED array. Um, one last thing I'd like to point out is it does come with a uh, plastic uh, finishing uh, sides for your um, heat sink right here. Um, these plastic sides I'm not going to be using, but they easily mount. Their screws uh, come with it. So my overall uh, review for the LED supply uh, LED arrays that I've built is good. I would definitely recommend getting this. Uh, it's great bang for your buck. Uh, it comes with an optional controller which will give you a sunrise, sunset. It's also great because if the fan breaks down, uh, you can easily replace the fan if the drivers break down or the dimmer control or the LEDs burn out. Like if you're looking at building a fish tank over the long term, this is probably a, a good array for you. Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed my first DIY video on how to uh, build these arrays. Uh, I'm going to include some information about LED Supply and their great technical support uh, and their webpage and where you can find this stuff should you want to get one. Uh, again, I think it's a great option. Uh, I would not hesitate to uh, get this uh, sort of system for uh, a reef tank. Needle nose, needle nose, needle nose, needle nose.